My Ubiquiti M23 has arrived. Finally, this thing has arrived. So a few weeks ago, I purchased the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Fiber. And when you're buying it, you can choose no storage or have an integrated one or two terabyte M2 NVMe drive. Now I opted for no storage because like Apple, Ubiquiti charge way too much for the one and two terabyte drives. It's, it's ridiculous. And also I didn't know how good their NVMe drives would be. I wanted to use my own. So the no storage option was the best option for me. But you can see here that in my Unify network here, it just says to add storage space. Now, one of the downsides to the no storage option is that they don't even give you a tray. You have to buy it separately. And you can see that this accessory is available here on the Unify UK store. It's 18 pounds and their default uh, price for postage and packaging is 10 pounds. So you kind of want to buy this well, you know, when buying some other things. But the problem here is that this thing is never in stock. I've quite literally never seen this in stock in the UK store. It is available in the Ubiquiti European store, but I did see it in stock in broadbandbuyer.com. This is a, a UK shop I use a lot and they're selling at £22.80 and then you have to add postage and packaging, but I wanted to get it, so I bought it from Broadband Buyer. And when I bought it, I also picked up the Ubiquiti 2.5 Flex switch, or if I zoom in here, you can see the official title is the Switch Flex 2.5 G5. It's five ports. So that's something I'll integrate and I'll review and talk about another day. What I'd like to do today is integrate this tray. I'd like to open it up. I'd like to show you what's inside and just give you a quick look at this hard to find Ubiquiti accessory. So this is everything that you get in the M2 box. You get the M2 tray itself, you get an Allen key style screwdriver, and then you get this little push mechanism here. And this is used to push open the tray and open it up so that you can slide this in. Now, with regards to the screwdriver here, it's got the same Torx style end. I'm not sure exactly what number that is, hard to show you in the camera, but you can see it there. Um, and you can see that's the kind of torque cell, the torque st style that you get, and you use this in laptops, etc. So it's good that they include this and in. you don't have to go looking for a screwdriver. Everything that you need is here. Um, the actual tray itself is very well made. It's got a nice kind of push mechanism there. Like that. See the screw there, which we'll need to remove. And on the back there, you've got a little Ubiquiti logo. And then there's the connector there. Stop focusing on my hand. There we go. You can see that's the end of it there. So if you look on the website and you look at the technical page, you'll see that it's got the dimensions, the weight is 53 grams or 1.9 ounces. And there's an installation guide there. And if you look at the installation guide, it shows that obviously what you get included. It says that it's for the Cloud Gateway Max, but this was obviously published before the Cloud Gateway Fiber was released. But it shows you how you actually install it. You use the Allen key screwdriver to open it up. You put in your SSD and close it back up. And then you will use the other key to open up the tray and then you insert it in like that. So pretty straightforward. It's not really rocket science, but it, it's good as a guide there to show you what to do. Now, I do have a lot of SSDs, most of which right now are in Thunderbolt enclosures. And I'll probably take out this one. So this is a Sabrent 
Um, this one's actually not Thunderbolt. I think this is USB USB Type C three point two. Um, so I've got a nine seventy Evo Plus in here, and I think this will be good enough for the job. Uh, but the good thing is with this is you know if you find a, a particular drive is is you know is not doing the job, or if you want to increase storage, you can simply switch in a different drive. Now I will say about that is that on the official website. It does say that it supports all M2 NVMe SSDs. They're all compatible, but they will be limited to Gen 3 times 2 performance. Now, they sell a 1 and 2 terabyte option, but there's nothing on their website to say that 2 terabytes is the maximum. So I don't have any evidence of this, but perhaps a 4 terabyte drive would work. Perhaps an 8 terabyte drive will work. At the moment, I've only got a few two terabyte drives, so I'm happy moving forward with that. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd maybe check with Ubiquiti if you are looking to put a four or eight terabyte drive in, and it'd be worth opening a support ticket. Now, what I will say as well is that, you know, the guide shows you how to insert this, but it doesn't say anything, for example, whether you should format this in a particular way. So I'm not going to format this just now. It is formatted. I think for a Windows installation, it could be from a Mac. I honestly don't know at this point, but I'm hoping that when you insert this, it will give you an option to format it correctly. So without further ado, let's get this drive out and let's put it into the Ubiquiti M2 tray. So this is not the best of screwdrivers, if I'm honest. I'd Probably normally switch to my own screwdriver set, but I want to show you what it's like to actually use this. There we go, fairly straightforward. And we can now uh, slide it out or pop it out. And you can see underneath it says for packaging only. So there is a screw in there. So we're going to have to use this again. This just slides. So this is the bottom of the tray, and you can see that it does support all variants of M2 NVMe drives. So that's good. And you can also see that on the other side here we have thermal pads. Now I do have my own thermal pads, some of which are like 1.5 millimeters thick. I'm not sure how good these pads are, but I don't think it's something to worry about because if you're only going to be, you know, uh, running at Gen 3 X2 performance speeds, I don't think thermal pads will be a big thing. And they look okay. I don't think there's going to be any problems with that. But of course, you can use your own thermal pads if you wish. So the tray supports many different sizes of M2 drives and they're all labeled there. This is a 2280, 22 millimeters by 80 millimeters. So you will secure it there. But the idea with all of them is that the connection part here will go to the bottom. And you can see that this aligns perfectly with the 80 millimeters. And when I, I line it up there, I just have to screw it in. So the M2 drive is now in, and it's important to see that it, there is a tiny little ledge that raises it off the bottom. That's quite good. So it should look like that. And now we just have to put the top back on. Okay, let's get this installed.
Installing the M2 tray is incredibly easy. All you have to do is remove the plastic holder, which is there already, and then you can insert your M2 tray, which has your SSD. Once you've done that, go back to your computer and go to your Unified console. And you'll now see that the storage tab is now showing your SSD. Now at the top there, it's got a message saying, please ensure that the, the, the device is powered off before replacing the Unify SSD module. Underneath it says the storage is fully operational. I've got a two terabytes drive and it's saying 17.2 gigabyte used out of 1.96 terabytes. There's a reformat option there. And then underneath there's a box here that's got information about the SSD. So it's got the firmware, version, the model, the serial number, the size, the lifespan, the temperature, and the power on hours. And all of that is useful information, especially for me in this instance, because this is an old SSD. So I want to check it every now and then and make sure that the lifespan is still okay and it's still a healthy drive. Now, what I'd like to do at this point is reformat the drive just to be sure that everything is set up okay. So let's click reformat. And you can see it says, are you sure you want to reformat storage? Your data will be permanently erased. This action cannot be undone. Let's do it. So it says erasing and preparing storage. Do not power off your UCG fiber or remove the SD card. That should really say SSD. The system is fully operational and will reach optimal performance once the process is complete. So you just have to play the waiting game. So there's now a message saying all available drives contain unrecognized existing data. Gracefully restart the console to attempt to initialize the storage using existing data. That's disappeared. We've now got a message saying formatting. And now it says that the storage is fully operational. And if I refresh the page, oh, we didn't even have to refresh the page. You can see there it now says 17.2 gigabyte used out of 1.96 terabytes. So my Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Fiber now has storage. There's an SSD in there now, and that means that I can store stats and audit logs and different things on the SSD. But perhaps more importantly, what it does is open up the Ubiquiti ecosystem to me. I can now use a number of different Ubiquiti products. For example, I can purchase Ubiquiti security cameras and record footage and store it on the SSD. So it's going to help me get more out of the whole Ubiquiti Unify ecosystem. Now, I do think that the criticism about this is justified. They should not be selling this as a separate accessory. It should be included for anyone who buys the Cloud Gateway Max or the Cloud Gateway Fiber. I don't like the fact that they're charging extra for it. And I certainly don't like it because this thing is always out of stock. So it puts you into a position where you don't have storage. But to their credit, the thing is very well made. That tray is solid. It's very easy to use and it's very easy to install. And let's be honest, it's relatively cheap as well. So it's hard to complain too much. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've learned a little bit about this M2 tray. If you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a comment below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And until next time, take care.